Hey guys, Jason here with RWB NetSec, and in this video we're going to be going over DNS Recon. So let's go ahead and just get a quick overview of it here. So DNS Recon was originally written by Carlos Perez back in 2006. Um, he originally wrote it in Ruby, but it has now been ported over to Python, which is the version that's uh, currently running in Kali. Uh, it performs several types of DNS enumeration uh, and included in that is uh, doing zone transfers, brute forcing subdomains, cache snoopings on walking, uh, who is lookups, etc. Uh, you can see a history of the tool on Carlos's website over at darkoperator.com. So if you get a chance, go check it out and look at some of the other projects he's worked on. Uh, the first scan type we're going to look at is just going to be a standard scan with DNS Recon. So let's hop out of here. So you should have your Kali machine launched already. Uh, so to get to DNS Recon, you're just going to go up to Applications, Information Gathering, DNS Analysis, and then DNS Recon. And as you can see, if you just launch it without providing any options for it, it's going to list the help file that shows you all of the switches that are available. So I'm going to leave that one up there. I'm going to open a new terminal window so we can have both screens here. All right, so to launch a standard scan with DNS Recon, all you need to do is type in DNS Recon. We're going to use TACD to specify the target domain. And I'm going to use our standard domain that we've been using in the other videos. And then you hit Enter. And then as you can see here, uh, it just brings back some of the default zone information for the target, uh, you've got the SOA record, the name servers, the MX records, and uh, a text record and a service record. So you can see again here with the service record, it's running on a SIP protocol, which points to the site is running some kind of voice over IP service. And that's actually running on port 5060 at this IP address. So it's always important to make note of the information you find here. Uh, some of these services especially, you may be able to find exploits that are available and you will know the specific port to scan against and where you can direct your exploits. So beyond this, let's start looking at some of the other scan types that are out there. So the next thing we'll look at is actually doing a brute force attack against the subdomains. So let's clear the screen out. And if you can if you look up here at the options, you've got this TAC T option here. And then you've got these different enumeration types that it'll it'll use. We're going to be using the BRT to brute force uh, subdomains. The other switch you're going to want to use here is the TAC D. And which allows you to provide a dictionary file to use uh, for the attack. So the command line is going to look like this. So we'll do DNS recon, TAC D, then our target domain. I'm going to do a TAC capital D and then point it to the location of the word list. And then we'll do a TAC T with the BRT enumeration type. Hit enter after you type that in. You notice the, the brute forcing is usually the one that takes the longest to run of, of any of the other enumeration types. So we'll give it just a minute here. And the purpose of brute forcing is to see if we can find other subdomains that are related to the target. Um, any new domains that we find here can be added to our attack list. Uh, but as I've said before in the other ones, you'll want to make sure uh, with your client that these other servers are within your scope for the pen test. Uh, 
don't just randomly start going and attacking servers that you're not sure what they are. Alright, so this is finished here. Uh, it came back with 10 records, uh, mostly the A records and a couple of C names we see here. So uh, just as a quick refresher on these DNS record types, uh, of course the A records, which are the most common ones that you'll find, these are the actual domain and IP mappings. So you've got email.zonetransfer.me and it actually maps to that specific IP address. A C name is just an alias record. So you, you can see here you've got staging.zonetransfer.me and then you've got this Sydney Opera House. So if you wanted to see how that worked, if you open a browser and go to staging.zonetransfer.me it should actually load up the Sydney Opera House's website. So we'll do staging.zonetransfer.me and, and there you go. So that's that's just a quick overview of how a CNAME record works. And administrators will use these for, for different reasons. So you can see from a brute force attack, you do get other domains, and you'll want to keep adding these to your list. So, you know, the, the reason for doing DNS recon and enumeration is to gather as much information about your target as possible because the more information you have up front, the better success you're going to have of being able to get into the target. So let's move on now to the, uh, the next scan type we're going to be doing, which will be a, a zone transfer. So let's go ahead and clear the screen again. And if you look up here at the options, you'll see that with this TAC A is the one that performs the actual AXFR enumeration type. So that's the one that we're going to be using here. So we'll do DNS recon, TAC D, zone transfer.me, and then TAC A. Hit enter. You see it's going to attempt a zone transfer against each of the name servers that it found uh, for the target domain. So you can see it's the same information that we looked at in the other videos, but uh, this site is configured to allow zone transfers to take place. So you can, you can look and see the amount of information. You've got the entire zone for this specific domain. And within it here, um, you're going you're gonna to get things like uh, other names, email addresses, uh, there's going to be uh, phone numbers, of course other server names, you've got uh, the MX records, and there may be additional um, A records that it found, which you can add to the brute forcing uh, domains that you found earlier. So you can see it's come back with a, a ton of information. Now normally you're not going to find many sites that are going to allow zone transfers to take place. Uh, this sp uh, specific website was configured to allow it just so you could test against it and see what a zone transfer looks like. Uh, but normally, uh, let's just do do that same scan against um, Google and see what you get back. So rather than a ton of service records, if you can, you'll see here that where it, ha it has attempted a zone transfer, uh, it's failing on all those. Oops. So most sites nowadays, most servers are configured securely and do not permit a zone transfer to take place outside of the authorized servers that can uh, ask for those.
Right, so as far as the options go, those are the main ones I wanted to uh, go over and demo in this video. Uh, you can have a look here. Uh, you can see these other types, reverse lookups, uh, Google searches, cache snooping. Um, go ahead and just play around with those yourself. Uh, I think that's the best way you're going to learn how to use the tool is just to get the hands-on experience. Uh, it's all pretty simple to use, pretty self-explanatory. You know, He's got the definitions for what everything does here. So just play around with it and see the other information you can get. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to cover in the video is being able to save your results so you can come back to them later. So I guess you notice that the uh, scans that we did previously, all of the results just displayed to the screen. Uh, so if you're doing a pen test for somebody, you're, you're going to want to save those results so that you can come back to them later because you'll you're going to want to import them maybe into other tools to use or include them in your final report. And DNS Recon gives us a few different options, uh, different file formats that we can save the data to. The first one we're going to look at is the TACTACDB option, which is a SQLite file. So if we go to here and we do our uh, our We'll do a zone transfer again. So let's do a DNS recon tag D zone transfer dot me tag A. We'll use the tag tag DB option. I'm going to point it to the folder that I made on the desktop here. DNS recon, and I'm just going to call it DNS recon dash DB. Hit enter. It's going to run through the scan. Everything will be displayed to the screen here. And as you can see, it said that it saved the records to this location. So if we open that folder up, we'll see that it's created this DNS recon db file. Uh, now, as far as working with it goes, Kali actually includes a tool that will allow you to look at the database files and mess with the data in them. So if you go up to Applications, database assessment and then go down here to the SQLite database browser and once it opens just go up to file open database and just point it to the location of your file in this recon SDB and you can see here this first tab database structure it shows the structure of the database shows the table that it created uh, the columns that are inside the table and the uh, the column types, the data types for each one. If you come over to the browse data tab this thing's wanting to run slow on me come on there we go. Uh, you can see that it does contain all of the information that you got from your scan. All of the MX records, A records, uh, text records, everything that came back from your zone transfer scan. Uh, one thing that you can also do here, you can actually execute your own SQL queries. So just say for example you wanted to just see all of the A records that came back. Uh, so you could do something like select all from data where top equals oops, A. And then just come up here, click on this arrow to execute the query. And you can see everything is returned here at the bottom. And it worked the same way if you wanted to see all of the MX records, for example. Uh, execute the query again and there it returns all of the MX records that came back and so another thing that you can do here once you get this uh, sorted out you also have the option then to take that data and export it maybe to a CSV file or as a uh, as a specific view so this is just one option in being able to work with your data 
the next thing we'll look at is an XML output. So let's clear the screen again. If I can top. And we'll do DNS recon. Tag D zone transfer dot me. Do another zone transfer. And then we'll use um, the tag tag XML option. Again, point it to our folder that we created on the desktop. And I'm just going to call this DNS recon dash XML. Hit enter again. Alright, says it's finished. Let's open our folder up and see. Yep, here we got the DNS recon XML file. So if we go, if we just do, uh, oops, DNS recon, DNS recon dash XML. Just have a look at the file. You can see the the info that it's got. Everything's in XML format here. Now uh, DNS recon contains another tool within its software packets called parser.py. And, and this tool actually will allow you to parse data out of your XML files. Uh, the tool is located under the user share DNS recon tools directory. So we could do, uh, let's just do a quick ls there. User share DNS recon tools. And you can see the parser.py. So if you run that tool without any options, let me get rid of the ls here. Run that tool without any options. It will bring up the help file and show you how to use it. So, say for example that you just wanted to see uh, the A records that were listed in this file. So you would run the file. Oh, not there. Parser. Parser. We'll do tack F to point it to our file. And then we're going to do a tack T and then just do A records. We hit enter and you'll notice it extracted all of the A records from your file. And of course, with the other options, you can choose to export to CSV format or JSON format if you need to. But that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. DNS Recon is probably one of the more popular DNS enumeration tools out there. Uh, Carlos did a great job writing this tool. It gives you a lot of options, a lot of output options, so it makes it easier. You can uh, even take the output that you get from it and import it into Metasploit. So I hope the video was informative for you guys. Uh, if this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe to the channel and share with your friends. Uh, my hope here is to build a community where we can help each other learn and grow in security, especially if you're just getting into it. So if you have any uh, comments or questions, please leave them below. And again, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day, guys.